Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Blue and Gold Talk, the video on the channel. If you're new here, that discusses random talk that just comes into my head. Guys, I've been looking at the roster all day and I'm piecing it together. I'll go over that with you a bit more. And I want to talk about Devin Levi because this is uh, something I've seen some people asking. Should we bring him up? I think we should. But well, let's see the next two games first, okay? I know it's important that he's down there and he's and he's uh, gets that experience. But it's more important. The, the parent team's always more important, guys. We'll see. But I, I don't want to lose out on a playoff spot because we didn't have Devin Levi up here. That would look real stupid, wouldn't it? That we didn't have another goalie up here that could give UPL a break except Comrie. Because Comrie just hasn't worked out. You know, uh, Stanley Cup pieces, I was talking about in the last video. Skinner, I don't think he'll be here. He's too old. Thompson, yes. Dylan, yes. Olison, no. Tuck, yes. So three and two there. Greenway, I think so. He's a hell of a penalty killer. Four and two. Gergensen's won't be four and three. Jost won't be four and four. I don't think Jost would be. Robinson probably won't be four and five. Zach Benson, yes. Five and five. Krebs, yes. Six and five. Peyton, uh, J.J. Paterka, yes, 7 and 5. Rusik, no, 7 and 6. So half of our forwards, I believe, will be here. And let's get down to Jack Quinn, yes. So eight, we got eight forwards, I believe, that are Stanley Cup pieces, okay? Then I go to the defensemen. Darlene, yes. Byram, yes. Clifton, yes. Yes. For those of you who don't like Clifton, tough tit. Tough. No, Clifton stays. This guy hits and he's aggressive. And he's not scared to drop the gloves if he has to. You know, we've got to talk about that too. So Clifton, yes. Yoki Haru. Now is his market values high, you know, in the offseason. But I think he stays. I think Yoki Haru is a very big yes, probably also. You know, he's another first rounder. He's a late first rounder, but he's still a first rounder. That could blossom even bigger. And let's face it, he's only 24, guys. I was talking about him last year, not rushing to trade him. So let's keep Yoki Haru. That's four. Bryson, no. Power, yes. I know some of you are mad at power. Guys, he's 21, and he's making under a million dollars this year. So don't complain this year. And people say, yeah, well, he's making all the money. No, he's not. Not till next year. So this year, you judge him on his salary, 916 k you can't judge him on next year's salary because we're not in next year. I'm going to call it, a, if it's a dog, I'm going to call it a dog. No. Owen Power is making 900 and, he's making under a million bucks. No. So Owen Power, he's earning his money this year big time. So we got five, five defensemen there. Clegg, no. Samuelson, yeah. Yeah, so we got eight, six. 14. Get what I'm doing here? So we got 14. I don't know where this came from. I just felt like doing it tonight. And then in goalie, UPL, I'd have to say yes right now. 15. And I'm convinced Levi's a yes. 16. 16 out of 23 are here. That When we win the Stanley Cup, because that's what this is about, guys. Me making these videos, spending these money on the lights and everything. It's about us... The video I make celebrating we just won the Stanley Cup. That's what this is about. So 16 out of 23 are here. 16. We're more than two-thirds of the way. See, this is the way I look at these things. I don't get caught up like you guys. Oh, we're not making the playoffs. So what? First time we get in, we might win the Stanley Cup, though. Let's get prepared for that. Forget just getting in. This year it would be nice to get in, win six playoff games. I wouldn't expect this team to be able to do more. But you never know until you get in, right? Youngest team in the league we'll probably wouldn't win the cup. But you never know till you get in, right? So there's a lot of things that we can break down, look at, and you know. But I think two-thirds of the team is built already. I think we're good in goaltending. We're good in the blue line now. I'd like to get one more stud blue liner. One more. But the truth is, I think we have him in the minors in Johnson. So I think we're okay on the blue line. It's young enough, but we might need in the off season for two years to get a veteran blue liner, 30 year old, that can stabilize it a little. 
because this is a young, young decor, guys. Young, very young. Youngest in hockey by far. It's not even it's eons. Show me a team that their core is 23, 22, 24, 23, 21. Show me this anywhere. Show me it in the last 10 years. You're not going to find it. Not like this. This is different. This is a special unit that we're building. So right now, we have to look beyond the Skinner years, beyond the Gergensen years, the guys that are 30, because we're, we're, you know, if we're going to win the Stanley Cup, I figure it'll be in about four years. Just a guess. About four years from now. So all you got to picture this team four years older. You got to picture this team being Detroit's age, guys. There you go. I took a cheap shot, but I'm not taking a cheap shot. I'm just, Detroit fans don't seem to comprehend that they have an old team. They think they're in a rebuild. They're, your team's over 29 years old, Detroit. Over 29. That's not a rebuild. That's a built team. But anyway, the eyes are planned. Stick with it. Our team right now, we, we are younger than ever. And the truth is, we feel, I, to me, it feels more ready than ever to take a next step right now. It just feels like this. So tomorrow we'll see. I mean, it could be a disappointing loss. A step backwards. A, a, a disappointing effort. We come out flat. UPL gets left out to dry. All these things could happen tomorrow. I don't think they will. I think the Sabres, I got a hunch, they're really going to show up again in this game. And guys, it has nothing to do with the Goatheads. Please <laughs> stop. It has nothing to do with the Goatheads. We're not going to win more because of the Goatheads. I could show you some real piss poor performances in the Goatheads this year that they did. So you're living in a dream world, a fantasy world. It's not a real world. But I'm all for the Goatheads coming back a little more. I think if they split them at home or even use them at home, whatever. Because I, I, I'm not crazy about the dark blue uniform. I'm just not. I don't think the darks should be a home uniform. That should be the whites that are home uniform. And the dark should be in the robe. But I'm old school. That's where I'm at with that. I think right now, guys, we're building this team properly. And we can't let the fans, the media, or it, it, like as long as we see signs this year. I think the Sabres fans that are knowledgeable... We'll be able to hack missing the playoffs if we see all the signs that this is really working what we're doing. Because people laugh and say, ah, well, you didn't make the playoffs. God, it's not about winning. It's not about making the playoffs. It's about winning the Stanley Cup. I'll say it again. What is the point of making the playoffs year after year if you don't win the Cup? Please tell me. Enlighten me. I've seen every playoff game in Sabres history. I can tell you it sucks because I never once seen them hoist it. I never seen them once have a night where they could play for it. We came damn close in 99 and 75. If I was to ro roll that off to you guys in order, 75, then 1980, 83, the game seven in overtime, Brad Park. If we could have got through that, you never know. We were the youngest team in hockey, younger than this team. And if we would have got through Game 7 in overtime against the number one overall team in the league that year and then played the defending champion Islanders, they would have been a loose bunch with Scotty Bowman. He would have had them... Go they were going that year. That year, everything was clicking. Let's move on, because that breaks my heart to talk about. And then nothing happened, guys, really. Till, and sorry, the May Day goal, there was nothing, it was a nothing happening playoff team. Okay, so they beat Boston four straight in an upset. After that, they got swept four straight by the Habs. So no, no playoff success that year, except for that memory. So for me, the May Day goal, as much as it's a fun, fun memory, is not as big as the Rene Robert goal in game, four, uh, game three of the Stanley Cup Finals. That was much bigger in 75. And then you got 98, 99, and Joe Juno ends us in 98, becomes a Sabre in 99, comes over, the Sabres are rolling again come playoff time, and they come this close, and the Brett Hall controversy happens. You know, and then we, and then again, in, uh, in 06, we're right knocking on the door of the Stanley Cup. In 07, uh, I didn't feel it like 06, but 07 was a special year still, you know. But you're not going to win a Stanley Cup in a slug jersey, guys. <laughs> we're just not, you know. <laughs> you know, you're not going to win a cup, in, you know, with this thing. So, you know, the, there's a lot of good memories that we have that we've taken. You know, there's so... I would say we've had seven shots at the cup. Realistically, you know, the 75, the 80 team. We have, of course, run into the Islanders, sadly. And then, uh, and I still haven't gotten over the 1980. Ugh. And then um, 83, hurt, 
because it was one goal away. We'll never know. And then 98, we had Dominic Kosick. 99, we had Dominic Kosick. Then 05, 06. And then the 06, 07 seasons. Seven chances. Seven legit chances at winning the Stanley Cup in our history. So folks that take cheap shots at us don't know. They don't know our history. So if they don't know our history, they really don't know hockey. And they're probably baseball fans or basketball fans or football fans only. And they come into our lounges to, I don't know, feel manly, <laughs> take cheap shots at us. Who knows? Guys, I'm going to leave it there for the night. You know, I've rambled enough, but uh, I'm excited with this trade because I believe it's another... I wasn't convinced Middlestat was a Stanley Cup piece. I just wasn't. I would have said that, honestly, guys. Really. Like Yoki Haru, I'm not convinced, really. not. He's one of the question marks on the team. I don't care if he's a plus 13 and I'm a plus minus guy. I, it's not that. He's not physical enough. You know, I want that presence. I want that that kind of Clifton hitting that I see, you know? But, uh, you know, Yoki Haru's kind of, he might be awesome next year. You know, Cl uh, um, Yoki Haru, feel, he feels like the type of guy that we could, we could trade him, get something in the off season, trade his rights, we could. But that could really come back to haunt us. It really could. This guy could go on to some team and just be a beast for years now. He might be this close to his prime now, Yoki Haru. So we better hang on to him, I think. You know? And groom, uh, groom Johnson a bit more. Bring up a vet next year. That would be my solution on the blue line. And get Johnson ready and get him up there for some games next year too, of course. I think we're set on the blue line now. Now getting Byram. My goodness. It's looking good, guys. All right, done for the night. Okay, guys, that's it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I gotta get these up to you. I'm gonna uh, upload them in bad quality. So if they look a little funky, it's because I'm trying to save time, guys. It's what time is it right now? It must be like after 11. Well, after 11 right now, 11.20. So I gotta get these up to you. See you guys in the pregame tomorrow. Have a great night, guys.